Hey, I'm Max and welcome to probably the last part for this tutorial. In this one, I'm going to make the negative banners that will reduce your player count, add more obstacles, make the road speed up, make the players die when they go off the edge, and also quickly show how to build on mobile. So let's get started. First off, to make the negative banners, we will go in our banner script. And inside of on trigger enter here, we create new players. What we want to do is check if the amount is negative. Instead, we will remove players. So here I will put if amount is less than zero, then I want to open the brackets and do for int i equals zero, i is less than the amount that we want to remove, i plus plus, so we will loop for the amount that we want to remove. And in that loop, we will do game dot delete player, and then we can simply get our game dot players zero. So if you wanted, you could get, for example, the players that are the furthest ahead or furthest back. But I just do player zero and that will get a more or less random player. Because that's the way I want to do it. It's the simplest way. But you could improve this by getting some specific players instead of just getting the first one in the list. And this will actually work because when you delete the first one in the list, it will remove it and then a new player will take its place. So for example, the number one will now become number zero. So then you delete number zero, then the number one will now become number zero. So you don't need to delete, for example, I. Just doing zero is fine. And here we can add else, else we will create the players. Now we need to create banners with an amount negative because right now we don't. So in our road script here, we can see the amount for the addition is two to 15. So we could do something like negative 15 to 15 but we don't really want a banner with plus zero because that's just useless. So here I'll just remove this, go above and do int addition amount equals to what I just removed. Then I'll do if addition amount is equal equal to zero, then I want to make it, let's say one. So then you make sure you won't have any plus zero, at least plus one. So if you put your addition amount here, you will no longer have any plus zeros, but you can still have plus one or minus one, which is kind of useless. It doesn't do much. So instead, what I prefer to do is do a bool positive addition equals to random dot range. Then I'll do zero to two because the max is exclusive. So this will give us a value between zero and one. And if you know anything about programming, you know, zero and one can give you a bool. So in a lot of language, this would actually work, but apparently in C-sharp, you need to do something like is greater than zero. So basically we generate a number between zero and one, and if it is greater than zero, so basically 50% chance, then it will have a positive addition. If you want to have more chance of having a positive addition, you could do for example, zero to four. So now it will create a number between zero and three. And if it, and unless it's zero, it will be positive. It will only be negative if it's zero. So that would be like a, what, 20% chance, 25%, right? So this would give a 25% chance of negative. So adjust the number however you want. And then in here, we can do just like we did before, a random range, but instead of doing negative 15 to 15, we can add another if else, like we did with the question mark. So we can add parentheses. And in here we can do is positive addition true? If so, we want to do a random range, and if not, another random range. So if positive is true, I want to do, let's say, 4 to 15. And if negative is true, I want to do minus 4 to, let's say, minus 10. I don't really want minus 15, that's kind of too much. So then I can simply copy and paste that for the other banner on the right side. And also one more thing I'll do, I'll go back on my banner script. And in the set data, when I check the amount and set the text, I'll do if amount is less than zero. So if it's negative, then I will set the text dot color equals to a new color and I'll do a red color. So one, zero, zero. So now just to test, I'll put my chance of negative at a hundred percent. And so you can see now the text spawns and it has the negative for the negative value, but it also has a plus before. So we need to fix that. And you can see when I go through it, nothing happens. So we need to fix this also. So first to remove the plus, we can simply do here when we set the text, if the amount is greater than zero, then we add a plus. Otherwise we had nothing. Then to fix the players not deleting, it's actually a simple error I made. So you can see here, we loop from I zero up until I is smaller than amount. 
and we go up. But amount is negative, so it will automatically be below zero, so it will not even delete one. So to fix this, we can simply flip amounts, so we just add a negative sign behind it. So now with this, it should work. Let's see what happens when I go through the minus five. Oh, it seems like I lost five players. Now let's go minus eight. Okay, I don't have many left. And now minus nine. I don't have any players left. So the minus clearly works. And if you want to make the players decal, like the little blue spots appear even if they're deleted from the banner and not from a spike, you could transfer the decal code into a function. So let's say uh, you type spawn decal like this. Then you go above public void spawn decal. So you just move it into a function like this and call it from here instead. And we need to put a transform for the parent. And then here we will simply put in the transform like this and input our parent here. So we spawn the decal and set the parent, which is the road in this case. And then in our function, we spawn it and set the parent. Then in our banner script, before we delete the player, we can do game.players0.spawn decal. And then we can simply do game object dot transform dot parent because the game object will be the banner and then the transform parent will be the road. So now when our players are deleted, they should leave a decal and there you go, it worked. So personally, I didn't do this in my game, but if you want to feel free and you can see the negative banners work. So now I'm going to put back the normal chance. I think I'll actually do zero one because I think 50% chance is okay. Then you probably also noticed earlier we had no players left, but the game still kept going. So in delete player, we can do if players dot count is less than or equal to zero. I think it actually can't be less than, but I just put this always just in case. Then it is game over, which means we can spawn a menu. We can go back to the main menu, we can do whatever. But in this case, I'll just put at the top using unity engine dot scene management and then do scene manager dot load scene and I'll load back my seed zero, which is just my basic scene that I have for my game. So like this, whenever my player count runs out, so whenever I have no players left, it will just reload my level. Then I also want to make the players die when they go off the edge of the road. So I'll just calculate real quick where it needs to be to be off the road. So I'll drag in my player prefab and check the X position. So for me, if I want him to die right here, it's negative eight and on the other side, plus eight. So I'll go in my code and do if transform.position.x is less than negative eight or transform.position.x is greater than eight, then you are off the edge, so you will die. So I'll just copy my code from the trigger of the spikes and delete this player. So as simple as that, when my players go off the edge, they should get deleted now. And whenever I run out of players, the game should restart. So let's try it out. If I go off the edge, you can't really see them. But if I come back, you can see I'm missing some. So now I only have a few and on the other side too. So you can see now I only have three. And if I go completely off, my level restarts. So you can see when I run out of players, it restarts automatically. Now, one more thing I wanted to do is to make it so the roads speed up as the game goes on. So to do this, you could, for example, create a public IE numerator, which is basically a coroutine. Call it, for example, speed up. Then you can do, for example, yield return new wait for seconds and then wait, for example, 10 seconds and then do road script array rows equals to find objects of type with an S road script and then each road you have to set the speed so for this we'll go in our road script and at the top I'll do public void set speed float speed then for this I also need to save the speed so speed equals to let's say minus six by default so here I'll start it at minus six I would actually change my function to add speed and then the amount to add. Then I'll do this.speed to get the one on my class plus equal speed, which is my parameter here. 
and I'll simply set again my rigid body velocity to my speed. So here I'll simply do negative speed. Or actually my speed is negative so here I'll simply remove my speed that I want to add and set my speed. So either you remove and set it to speed or you can set your speed to let's say 6 then add and change it to negative speed. So either way you want it. So I guess I'll leave it like that since it's like that but it's the same thing. Then in my game script I want to do for each road script road in roads and for each I'll do road dot add speed and I'll add let's say 1.0 then we want this coroutine to run forever pretty much so I'll put it all into a while true this is not really something that's recommended for most things so if you prefer you can do something like bool speeding up equals to true and put the while speeding up here so whenever you want you can set the speeding up to false to end this and in the start we'll do start coroutine and color speed up just like this so this will start the coroutine which every 10 seconds will speed up the roads i'll actually set it to let's say three seconds just to test but that should speed it up very fast so don't do this so now my road should speed up every three seconds and it looks like they're not moving at all and that's actually because of a silly mistake I made so here I set it to minus speed which is my parameter here so having a parameter with the same name as a variable can be kind of confusing sometimes so I can do something like add speed and then set it here like this and this way it's a lot less confusing and I know I set the right speed so now it will be set to my speed variable so now when I play the road should speed up and you can see the banners are coming towards us kind of fast and you can obviously see it speed up right now and you can see our negative banners are working very well my numbers are going down so you can see the speed up is working very well it is speeding up pretty fast so we should add a maximum speed so it doesn't go too fast so now all we have to do is slow back down the speeding. So in my case, I'll do every 10 seconds. And I also want to add a maximum speed. So something like if speed is greater than, let's say 20, then I want to set the speed to 20. So this will add a maximum speed. And I also noticed that all of my banners were still negative because I put 0, 1, which basically only creates 0. So I want 0, 2 to have 50% chance. So now the road should slowly speed up. We should have plus and negative banners. So you can see we have both a plus four and a minus four. Let's try again the negative banner, see if it works. And yes, it worked. And if I go off the edge, my players should get deleted and it works. And if I run out of players, the game should end and restart. And you can see it worked. It created an error in the console. I don't think that's a big deal, but if you want to fix it, you can simply go in your game and at the bottom, do something like if player.rb is not equal to null and if so then we want to set the velocity so now whenever the game restarts there should no longer be an error so you can see no errors okay so finally i want to show how to build the game to be able to send it to other people or even put it on the google play store or apple store so first if you want to build it on windows you just go at the top left file build settings then you can edit your player settings to change, for example, the company name, the product, the version, add some icons, and also check out the other settings if you want. But I'm just going to leave it by default. Then you can do build and select where you want to build it. So for example, I'll do right click, new folder. I'll call it, for example, build. And in this build folder, I will simply double click. Then I'll make another folder for Windows build because I want to try mobile build after that. And then it select. Then it's going to build your game for Windows and you can then send it to other people, upload it on Steam, whatever you want. Once your game has been built, you can double click the EXE and it will launch it. If you want to build on mobile, you need to select the version you want, so Android or iOS for example. If you don't have it imported into your Unity, you might need to install with Unity Hub to allow yourself to use Android build or iOS build for example. So after you've installed the Android build, then you will be able to build with Android. 
Then once you've installed either Android or iOS or both, you can just hit switch platform and it will switch to that platform. Then you might need to change some settings and hit build and run. To run it on your mobile, you can either use the Unity application or plug your cell phone in your computer. Once you've built to Android or iOS, you might get some warnings like this. Solve the color space. You can open the player settings with the button in the bottom left. And in there, you might see some things like linear color space, requires OpenGL3. So you could do something like change the color space here to gamma, but changing this will change the way your game looks. So that might not be what you want, but as you can see, in my case, OpenGL S2 is deprecated and only very old phones might use this. So in my case, I prefer to just remove this. So now I fix all of my issues by using only OpenGL S3. So now you can see I can build and build and run. So I'll just plug my Android phone in my computer and then hit build and run. Make sure to also go on your phone and hit trust the computer and everything else. I think you might also need to enable the developer settings and everything on your phone. So you can check out another video about that. I'm not going to show how to build a mobile. There's already a ton of videos for it. I'm just going to show that the input works with the new input system and everything. My phone is now plugged in my computer, so I'm going to hit build and run, go in my build folder and create a new folder for Android. And I'm simply going to build inside of this with build and run. It should then run it on my phone. I actually got an error, GDK not found. So you can see I'm missing the GDK and the Android SDK and NDK. To fix this, I can go in my installs of Unity Go on the little icon, add modules, and then add my Android SDK and NDK and open GDK. Okay, so now I've got everything installed. Also, by the way, if you want to upload to Google Play, you might want to check that. But in my case, I just want to test the build, so I'm just going to build and run. And hopefully it's going to work. Also, before building, once again, you can go in the player settings and change the name, the icon and everything. Also, one thing that's important is to go in resolution and change the rotation to landscape to make sure it's on the side and not in portrait mode because our game is on the side. So I got my game to run on my Android phone pretty well, but it's pretty laggy. So you can try to optimize it multiple ways, such as going in quality and changing the render pipeline to the performant one instead of high fidelity. You can also go in the vSync and disable vSync. And also many things you can do in your game, such as if you open the banner, you can see things such as dynamic occlusion, which is not very necessary, you can uncheck that. And also cast shadows for the banners, not necessary at all. And you can also go in your performance renderer settings and change settings such as the shadows to reduce them. So I guess just try to mess with settings and reduce them until they work pretty well on mobile. So in my case, pretty much the only thing I did was to go in my player settings, then go in quality and uncheck balance and eye fidelity for Android, so I only left performant. And here I put performant to make sure that it would use the performant pipeline with the performance settings. And then in my performance settings, I change the shadow max distance to 5, so pretty much no shadow. And then I build and run again on my phone. And now there's little to no lag. Obviously, you can still improve the lag a lot. You can still make it a lot smoother. But I think this is good enough. Okay, so now I think I've shown pretty much everything I wanted to. Of course, now you can use your own creativity to add something like power-ups or other things to the game to make it more unique. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial.